it's Tina. So I'm here today and I'm gonna make another meal prep. Um, I'm gonna make, I found a recipe, Irish beef stew. So we're gonna give it a go. It goes into the Tupperware pressure cooker, into the microwave, and there's some interesting ingredients in this that I'm really not for sure if I'm gonna appreciate it, but I think my husband might appreciate it. He might like the flavor of it when it comes about, and you'll see those ingredients when I add them. So I'm just gonna go along with the recipe. I have never made it before. Of course, I never make anything before, do I? So first thing we do is it wants a medium onion chopped. So I'm gonna put these ingredients together and put them in my little um, chop prep. Chop and prep. Get them all chopped up. I like to call it my little lawnmower. And my parents have bought them, and my mom and dad call it the lawnmower too, and they love it. So, yay, thumbs up. It's a great product. So, let me get my little onion. I'm just going to quickly cut it into some pretty big chunks here. So I've got my little, my little lawnmower, my chop and prep. So it does come with the blade cover, which is great because you never know when I'm going to be around and do something. And it just fits in the bottom. So you can see that it just fits in the bottom. I'm going to toss the onion pieces in. So this was probably like a medium sized onion. And I'm going to get all of that in there much as I can, kind of shoving it in. And then the recipe also called for some cloves of garlic. I really like garlic. Brett, not so much. So, but considering I'm the one cooking this, I don't think he gets his choice today, does he? He won't mind. So... Then you just lock it into place. It's not just that easy. And then here's why I call it a lawnmower. You just pull start it like it, it's a lawnmower. That's it. That's all you do. And it's coming along nicely. So I just want to make sure. I mean, I'll show you. Bleed out so I don't hurt myself. So, ah. so I've got some pretty nice. Gosh, can you see it? I've got some pretty nice chunks in there. Um, looks good to me. And the garlic is nicely chopped up. So, so we're gonna go with that. Oh, it's making me tear up a little bit. So again, I'm really glad that I'm not having to sit here and cut these up all the time. Holy buckets. I would not appreciate that. So we've got that. Um, so we're going to put those into the pressure cooker. Because you know, it's another product that I love. So I've got my little pressure cooker here. So I'm going to pour those in. If I can get them all in there, right? We'll get them. We'll get them in there. Yay. It did do a nice job with the garlic, so I like that. Then Making me tear up a little. Holy buckets. So the next thing that it says to add in is two carrots peeled and cut into large chunks. So, as you know, I got the big containers of the Fridge Smart, which Brett just loves. He really enjoys the celery, everything. Everything that is in here right now, there's a big old cucumber has been in here for a week and look at it 
it's still stiff as a board. So I'm going to take out some of these carrots. Called for two. I'm going to toss in three because why not? I'm going to put this back in there. It's really nice because I'm able to keep um, all the like foods together. So it all depends on how they breathe. Here it is. There's a picture guide that tells you how to do everything. It really just depends on how everything breathes. Turns out we got different kinds of breathers. So some fruits and vegetables are heavy breathers. Some are like middle of the road. And then there's others that are very low breathers. And you want to put like things together. So... I'm just going to choke these up. So I chunked them up and then I'm kind of cutting them in half again. So. so that'll be good. And I know that he wanted a stew when I came home the next time because when I was gone last time to the apartment, I made that burp bread. <laughs> and he was like, seriously? You waited until you were gone to make that? So. All right. So there's that. The next thing it says to add in there. Ooh, I forgot to buy parsnips. Turn it. And I like parsnips. So the next thing, we're going to skip the parsnips because I don't have any. Maybe I can add more carrots. Or even some celery. I think I'll do that. Yeah. So the next thing it says is to take um, some potatoes. It says five small red ones and just quarter them. Well, I have these little ones that I'm just going to either cut in half or cut into quarters. And just plop them in. Yeah, he might like it if I add celery to this. I think I'll do that. So instead of parsnips, we're going to add celery. And I'm just chunking these up. Such a simple dish it seems to make. Which I love. I will have to make some more of that burp bread later, though, because he hasn't been able to try it. And I think he's going to like it a lot. Let me grab out some celery. I guess I'll grab like three pieces because I did three carrots. So we'll do that. These are wonderful. Oh my goodness. I can get the lid on. Can't see what I'm doing. There we go. It's all on. Perfect. It's going to go back in my fridge. All right. We'll chop up the celery. Put it in. I might cut these. I might have to cut these in half too. I don't know. Can you hear that crunch? These have been in there for a week. I mean, really. Some of them I might cut in half. All right. Now what do we add in? I don't know. Um, add the beef. So it told me to get a two pound chuck roast this was the smallest chuck roast that I could find, and it's 2.29 pounds, so hopefully that works okay. I think I'm going to... Why does it not say cut it up? Does it say cubed? It does. So I'll cut that up really fast so that it can go in there.
get it in there nice and neat. Get that out of the way. <laughs> so I'm not going to be home for Easter this year. So we did, um, I did Easter baskets yesterday. It's pretty cool. This, kind of the stuff that I found was really interesting this year. Um, there's one book that's called The Story of My Life. And it just gives you writing prompts through the whole book. Well, there's a big chunk of fat that I'm going to take out. Because let me tell you, if Brett were to come across that while he's eating, that would like ruin the whole thing. Yeah. So I'm just going to make these into big chunks. Cause oh my goodness, Apple. Apple. I think she thinks that she can hear Brett driving and she just misses him so much. But he's not home yet. It's a Saturday. He was, he's on call this weekend, which means he gets like four days off next weekend. Of course, when I'm working, he'll get four days off. So he's going to be surprised when he comes home and he finds that I did, in fact, make him a stew. He will like this a lot. What's the matter, girl? Is Timmy down in the well? Apple. Apple. Stop. That's enough. She's like, I'm not going to listen to you. I only listen to him. She's a good old girl. The other two dogs are outside right now, so. So that could be another reason that she's getting that way. So this is going to make a really nice rustic stew, which is good because it's like Brett's type, favorite type of meal. bit more meat to chop up. Just trying to get some of that fat off. There we go. And then I'll check and see what's next and then you'll get to see the surprise ingredient. Because I don't think that you can see it. I don't think you can see it. <laughs> and you know, when we lived in England, we didn't make it to Ireland. So I have no idea if this is like authentic. All right. Now, what do we do? So those are all in there. I'll add some salt and pepper. And oh, let me find my pepper. I gotta wash my hand because touching that meat is just gross. Just gross. I don't like touching it. I'll we'll add some pepper. I don't want to add some salt to it. Probably good. We'll add some salt. Okay. What do 
Alright, so here is where I'm going to add the surprise ingredient. So, it did tell me to make a cup and a half of broth. So, for right now, I've just heated up my water. And I typically use this broth right here. It's got a nice flavor to it. Although, it looks like dirt. <laughs> I always feel like I'm pouring dirt into it, but it's got a nice flavor. So we'll just scoop that in there. And are we up to the, oh, and then it wants me to add in some tomato paste. It says one tablespoon. So let me open that. And I'm not even going to measure it. I'm just going to chunk some in. Because it should be okay if I have more. So. That's probably about a tablespoon. So, the surprise ingredients. I hope you're as excited as me. I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. But it says, one 11 ounce bottle of... Guinness beer. Now, here was my issue. There were a couple of different kinds of Guinness beer, and I'm not a beer drinker at all. So, I got the one that said, like, smooth and creamy or something. Not feel for sure. I don't even know what I did with the box. I put all the rest of the beer in the fridge. Because the other one did not say anything that sounded pleasant to me. <laughs> I mean, if you know me, you know that um, I might drink a Mike's Hard Lemonade a couple times a year. So, let's see. Let's see what it smells like. Ooh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's kind of, it's not horrible. <laughs> kind of came out like that. <laughs> so I'm going to mix this together <sighs> with um, the beef broth and the tomato paste. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a little strong. <laughs> It's, but again, not horrible, because I know a beer smells like this fine. It's just not my preference. So then it says to heat this up for 90 seconds. I'm putting it in my stack cooker simply because I felt that would work okay. So 90 seconds. We're going to let that go. So, so far, this is what I've got. Um, there is a max fill line, and I did go a little bit beyond that. So, I'm hoping that we're okay, considering there's a lot of air pockets in there. So, that should take care of that issue. And I think this might be the last thing to do. No, it's not. Darn it. Um, so, oh, we're almost, we're almost ready to put it in the, in the microwave to cook. So this was going for 90 seconds. It's almost done. And then it wants me to whisk in, um, a quarter cup of flour. So... And then that gets poured over top of it, and then we cook it. So, this is interesting. You know, it's think about heating up beer and everything in the microwave, but I guess it's fine. At least the dog settled down. I don't know where the cats are. No idea. All right, so let's see. Can you hear it sizzle? Ooh. 
a little strong. So, oh, I was just going to pour it in after I told you that what I had to do was whisk in the flour. So I'm just going to whisk that together. Sorry for the noise. Oh, it's really fizzy. It's really bubbly. I don't even know if the flour is whisked in or not. It's so bubbly. But I'll show you. So it's, it turned pretty bubbly. So I'm just going to pour that out. Okay, and then we're going to line up the arrows on the pressure cooker, lock it into place, it's ready to go in, alright. So it's going to cook for a little while, um, I'm going to clean up around here, maybe try and get my next meal prep ready, so I will see you later. Okay, so. It might be done, it might not, I need to check it. But before, of course, you can open up your Tupperware pressure cooker, you have to wait for the little yellow knob, whatever it's called. You have to wait for that to go down, which means the pressure is down, so I haven't even been able to check and see if it's done. Um, this, I found it. It was Guinness Smooth and Creamy. So. I don't remember what the other one was at the grocery store, but this one says hints of coffee and chocolate, smoothly balanced with bitter, sweet, roasted notes. I don't know. All right, let's open it up. I can smell it. I've been smelling it for quite a while. So you just take the locking mechanism off, and I'm going to open it away from myself because of the steam. Of steam. Let me get up. I'm just stirring it up. That's all I'm doing. And then I'll show you what it looks like. So, of course, it just looks like beef stew. Smells really good. So let me grab a fork because I want to try um, a piece of meat. Let me poke one of these potatoes. Okay, so the potatoes are fork tender, which is great. Carrots are as well. And the celery is soft. So let's see. Cut a piece of meat. And I just know it's going to be hot. Holy buckets. <sighs> I've got to work myself up to try it. <laughs> a little bit off of it. It's very tender. It tastes good. The dog's staring me down. What you want, baby? I don't want to say it too loud because she'll jump right up on me. But yeah, he's going to like this. This is really nice. Um, he'll be surprised when he gets home. So the only thing that I have left to do is to make um, the burp bread. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. <laughs> At least I made this do. Um, Alright, so you have a good day, and I will see you again later.